Hey guys, this is Adam. And this is Johnny. Today, we're going to give you some tips on how to work from home a bit better. And we're also going to look at maybe some downsides of working at home. Okay, well, it looks like Jack is working from home and Peter has some questions. He wants to know what it's like. So we're going to listen to a dialogue between them. Okay, let's go ahead and listen to that dialogue. Jack, I heard that you're working from home these days. Yeah, the whole team has been working remotely for a while now. Are you finding it easy to adjust? Well, it's nice to roll out of bed a bit later and not have to worry about the commute. No doubt. Although, I'd imagine it's hard to stay productive all day long. It's easy to get distracted, sure. But I have my routine and I stick to it. You probably don't have to worry about your physical appearance though, right? I'm still dressing as though I were going to work. It helps me to stay on track. A lot of workers must attend virtual meetings dressed like slobs. At first, people were in their pajamas and relying on app filters, but they're getting better. I guess the lesson is, don't phone it in, even when you're phoning it in. Okay, and the dialogue begins with Pete asking Jack, Jack, I heard that you're working from home these days. So if we are working from home, of course, that means we're working in a home office or in our bedroom or somewhere in our house. Right. Now, the question that we always get is, what's the difference between working from home and working at home? Well, they both can mean the same thing, working at home, working from home. But if you tell someone you work at home, I mean, what does that imply? Yeah, usually working from home is a more temporary situation and working at home is a more permanent. Now, that's not all the time, but that's just the sense that these phrases can give other people. Right. That's why Peter mentions these days. He's implying it's sort of a temporary situation. And Jack says, yeah, the whole team has been working remotely for a while now. Now, Johnny, what does remotely mean? Well, it just means you're not in the city. You're outside of the city somewhere. It could be even far off in the forest somewhere. It's definitely far off, whether it's on a mountain or in the forest or at the bottom of the sea. Basically just means from a distance and without any physical contact. Yeah, so we can do everything on our cell phones and computers these days, right? Sure, you can lock your doors remotely and unlock your doors. That's pretty crazy. Yeah, or you can even control another computer remotely through your computer. Exactly. So these are words that we often use with remotely control. In fact, there is a thing called a remote control that is a pretty common thing to have in your home. Right. So speaking about things in a home, it sounds like Jack is still adjusting to working remotely. So adjust is basically a fancy word for change. So in a way, you're getting used to something too, right? Right, right. Exactly. And Pete really could have asked that question here. Are you finding it easy to get used to it? Are you getting used to it? Mm -hmm. So getting used to stuff, what comes to mind is like a new job or if you move to a new city, you have to adjust to working there or you have to adjust to living there. Sure, sure. And maybe a new city or a new job will give you a fairly difficult situation. So we always need to adjust to difficult situations, to new situations. Right. And if you're working remotely, one thing you're going to have to adjust to is actually kind of a nice thing, waking up a little bit later. Ah, yes, yes. And that's what Jack says next. It's nice to roll out of bed a bit later and not have to worry about the commute. Yeah. So let's talk about two things in the sentence here. First, we have the phrase roll out of bed. Right. So, of course, we all get out of bed every day, most of us anyway. But roll out of bed gives me that impression of, I don't care what time it is. It's very casual. I just slept in for an hour. Yeah, exactly. So because he's not having to wake up early to travel to work, Jack can just kind of wake up anytime he wants. And just roll out of bed. And of course, one reason people get out of bed early is because they have long commutes to work. Mm -hmm. So Adam mentioned a long commute and 
A commute is just the amount of time it takes us to go from our house to our office and our office to our house. Exactly, exactly. So commute can be a noun. I have a long commute. I have a short commute. And of course, it can also be a verb. I commute to work every day. But of course, Jack doesn't need to commute anywhere. I guess he commutes to his living room, maybe. He says, no doubt. Although I'd imagine it's hard to stay productive all day long. Well, I think this is something people struggle with in the office or at home. Right, right. And if you're productive, I mean, that means you're doing a lot of work. You're producing a lot. And of course, if you are at a factory and you're being productive, then you are building things. If you're at an office and you're being productive, maybe you're answering emails, maybe you're getting new clients. I don't know. However productive is defined at your office, you are just basically working hard. So we can also use this word in the noun form. You can say, my productivity is going up or down depending on how productive you are. Right, exactly, exactly. Well, one thing that can affect our productivity is whether we get distracted or not, right? Yes, that's very true, very true. So being distracted just means that we are not focusing or not able to focus, we're not able to concentrate. Get distracted is just the verb form of that. Exactly. And things that make us distracted are called distraction. But Jack says he has a routine and he sticks to it. Right. That's very important. So a routine, of course, is something that we do again and again. It's like a plan and he uses that plan every day. Now, Pete is still really curious here about all this working remotely. So he asks, you probably don't have to worry about your physical appearance though, right? So your appearance is the way that you look. Of course, if you're working at home, you probably don't have to worry about your appearance too much. Right. You can wear your pajamas. You can wear nothing at all. Nothing at all. Mm, yeah, I guess, unless you have meetings that you have to do. Ah, uh, yeah, that's a really good point. So actually, Jack is not wearing his pajamas. He is not wearing nothing at all. He, part of his plan is to still dress as though he were going to work. So basically, as though is just like saying like. I'm dressing like I'm doing this. Yeah, and it's close to another phrase, as if. As if is almost easier to understand, right? Because this really is just an if situation. We already know he's not going to work, <laughs> but he's dressing like he is. He's dressing as if he were going to work. So we're gonna stop trying to explain this and just give you a few examples here. One thing that we really do want to focus on is the tense of the verb that goes after. In the dialogue, we see the word were. I'm dressing as though I were. Don't ask too many questions about this. This is the smart person way to say it. Right, right. But you'll also hear as if I was, uh, mm. and you'll even hear people say, I'm doing it as though or as if I am going to work. Mm. So there's more than one way to use it. Exactly. But we know that you guys are super smart, so we're going to give you the super smart way. Let's look at a few examples. All right. So I can say, I feel as though I've become a new person. Oh, yeah. After you bought those new clothes. Right. I look so sharp. <laughs> <laughs> uh, or I could say, I didn't buy clothes, but I bought a dog. My little dog, my new little dog is so cute. He always looks as though he were smiling. Aww. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, there are always posters on the wall. We call these motivational posters. And sometimes you see them say things like, always dance as if no one were watching. Right. Just let yourself go. Okay, guys, that is the grammar point for today. For now, back to our dialogue. Johnny, why does Jack dress as though he were going to work? Well, he says it helps him stay on track. Okay, so on track basically means going in the right direction. Right. You don't want to get off track. That means you're distracted. You're not focusing. It's kind of like the phrase we saw earlier, to stick to it. Right, exactly. Now, we also sometimes see the phrase keep 
on track. Is there any difference here? Mm, there's no difference. You can say both. I had to stay on track. I had to keep on track so that I could get the job done. Okay. Well, Pete continues by saying a lot of workers must attend virtual meetings dressed like slobs. So if you're working remotely, you're probably going to have to have a lot of meetings with your coworkers, and we refer to those as virtual meetings. Yeah, almost anything we do online can be described as virtual something. Here in Vancouver, a lot of people that buy homes or apartments will first take a virtual tour. So someone will just take out their iPhone and, you know, and just give someone a look at this apartment. Right. Or you can do virtual shopping. So you look at things online and you see, is that what I want to buy? Okay, I'm going to buy it. Exactly. Or I remember when I was a kid, they were always talking about virtual reality. Wow, these games are going to be so fun. You won't even know the difference between virtual reality and real reality. Yeah, it's kind of scary. I hope that doesn't happen. Mm, yeah, well, we're not quite there yet. Anyway, while these people are attending virtual meetings, I'm sure that a lot of them really are dressed like slobs. Yeah, I mean, that happens when you work from home. You don't want to change. You stay in your pajamas. Basically, a slob is someone who's lazy and just kind of messy. Yeah, exactly. We have an adjective form of this word too, which is slobby. So yeah, if you stay in your pajamas all day, I mean, you're kind of lazy. It doesn't mean you're necessarily messy, but people might still describe you as a slob. And uh, Jack says, at first, people were in their pajamas and relying on app filters, but they're getting better. Okay, so it sounds like these slobs are starting to take Jack's advice here or maybe following his lead and dressing as though they were going to work. Jack ends the lesson by giving us another phrase that really also means put in a bit of effort or not put in any effort at all. Right. He says, I guess the lesson is don't phone it in, even when you're phoning it in. Okay. So a little bit of a joke here. To phone something in basically means to make the least effort possible or to do something without any enthusiasm. So for example, if Johnny and I were phoning this lesson in, we could just say, Hey, wait, today we're going to talk about some words. Okay, here are the words. Okay, thanks for listening. See you. Just read right out of the dictionary. Right, 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 right. Of course, we never phone it in here. We are always very enthusiastic. We always put in a lot of effort. But you can use this phrase whenever you're talking about uh, your job. Maybe you're not really working very hard. Oh, geez, Tom really phoned it in today. Exactly. It makes me think like you're too lazy to show up. You just get on the phone and say, hey, yeah, what do you want? I can just tell you over the phone. Exactly. Exactly. A lot of people think that working from home is such a dream and it's so fun. You can roll out of bed whenever you want and not have to worry about your appearance. But yeah, there's some downsides too. Right. You don't see your coworkers. You could get distracted. It's hard to be productive. Exactly. Okay, guys, well, we want to know about your experiences working from home. Let us know in the comment section. Okay, guys, thanks as always for listening, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Working from home. Remotely. Adjust. Roll out of bed. Commute. Productive. Distracted. Appearance. Stay on track. Virtual. Slobs. Phone it in.